Chicken thighs are a really good cheap um, cut of meat. They're a lot more um, flavor in them. Um, they're really good to work with. And there's a better there's a better taste to them. A lot of people are scared you would use breast traditionally and more confident or more used to using breast, but I really recommend trying these. They're they're a great they're a great way. Cook them a wee bit longer, they hold their flavor better, they're more juicier than a breast. And um the, you can get them with the skin on and with the bone in as well. But I think for starting off with the skinless and boneless are, are fantastic. Um we'll cut them in half. So you you roughly want kind of one thigh per, per two thighs per person. Um, and they come in big trays and you get them in the supermarket or the butchers and again, they're, they're a great, um, great way. And also they keep as well, if you're storing this later, the, the juices in them stay, it stays more juicier. Um, we will start with an onion. So we're going to um, just simply uh, cut this, chop this up. So we just start by, we just cut it in half. And we just peel it. This is the kind of dish the weather's miserable outside. Have this in your on the hob. It's just it's fill your house with lovely smells and just comfort food, which is what you want with this type of weather. We just peel this. We're just gonna cube this up. If you can, you always try and follow the lines of the onion itself. It cuts better. See the wee lines that run, you know, run along it. You can buy, you can buy frozen or really chopped onions. That would work as well. For more easier convenient. Another great thing that's what's really good with chicken thighs is that they're um very lean, full of protein. So they're quite good for you as well. And with the skin off, you take away a lot of the fat. So that's quite a good source of protein, healthy. Okay. We'll just apply the carrots as well while we're here. Make a bit of room here. So for this, you kind of want you want kind of two big carrots, but my ones are quite small today, so I'm going to use four of them. And we're not going to peel them. Um, you can if you wish, but there's a lot of um, a lot of the vitamins and nutri nutrition is in the skin, so it just adds the flavor and good for you. We'll just pop and peel them. And again, you could use frozen carrots. Would work as well. Just gonna roughly chop them into shapes. Again, you could use any veg you have lying about in your fridge and use up whatever you have. It doesn't have to be carrots. Um, it's the beauty of this kind of cooking. You can just add in whatever you have. Okay, we'll get the heat on the pan. So <clears throat> just get... Just, hang on, just a little time. So I'm going to use some garlic infused olive oil. Um, it's a great way of you don't have to use as much fresh then, and get that you get that flavor in from the start, and you don't have to worry about garlic burning and things. So it's really handy. You just want to coat the base of your pot, and then we're going to add in our our carrots and our onion. everything that we stir about. Then we're going to add in two sticks of celery. So again, just roughly chop them with the top and peel them as well. Celery is really good for holding flavor. 
Um, it nearly melts when you slow cook with it. Um, but it just adds that great, it just keeps flavor really well. And again, it's very good for you and very cheap. Just pop that in. We'll just give it a quick seasoning with some salt. That will stop our onion burning. It draws out the moisture of the onion and a bit of pepper as well. Just give it all a good stir and just keep it down low. So with these, you really want to sweat them down and cook them for about 10 minutes. Um, the longer you cook them, the slower you cook them, the better. They're, they caramelize, their flavor comes out more. Um, so it's really important at this stage to just take your time. I am going to add some fresh garlic as well, even though we have the garlic oil. This just kind of gives it a bit more of a pick. If you're not a big fan of garlic, you could, I would, you can leave it out. It's fine. So gonna, we'll pop the lid on and we'll just sweat those down a bit. That the steam then will hit the hit the lid of the pan and go back into the pot and cook faster and keeps everything nice and moist. We're just gonna peel our garlic. Let's give this sounds like it's too high. So we're just gonna lower it right down. Okay. It's all cooking away nicely. A great base for any kind of soups, stews, um, a great combination just with flavors. I will grate the garlic in. We're going to be adding some butter beans in a bit. And again, they're a great source of fiber. Um, just canned. You can use dry if you wish. You would need to just soak them the night before. Um, the can's really handy, really convenient. And they're um, they're cheap, they're tasty, and they, they're quite versatile. You can add them into lots of lots of dishes. Um, it's just a great way of bulking out, um, bulking out meals. You could use um, chickpeas or any other type of bean base, but again, whatever you have um, handy. I'm just going to grill on our garlic. Oh. And it'll just give everything a nice sweet kick and bring the garlic oil to life as well. Get it all in there. Give it all a another stir. I'll just bring our heat back up a wee bit again. Let's pop our lid back on. We'll get our potatoes ready. So um, we're just using some baby potatoes. We're just going to cut them in half. Um, if they're really big, cut them again, put them in the fours. Uh, the smaller you cut them, the quicker they'll cook for you. So if you haven't got much time, put them quite small. If you've got a bit of time, you're going to cook it longer and keep them up a bit bigger. Again, we keep the skins on as well because they have all the vitamins and minerals we want. So the longer you can do this part, the better. It really does add to your flavor and the texture when we later on as well. So just that wee bit of extra time at the start really pays off later for you.
It's quite wholesome chicken. It's very, you know, quite traditional, a uh, rustic. It's kind of, but I think it's always, always the great basis of home cooking. There's something quite satisfying, just staring away at a pot, isn't there? We are going to add, we're going to add some bay leaf and some dry thyme. Um, you could add fresh herbs if you wish. We're going to add some parsley at the end, fresh parsley. Um, but yeah, with the thyme, thyme and chicken go together so well. Um, so that would be nice. And we're also going to add a bit of Dijon mustard. We have a bit of heat. Um, it's, it's a French mustard. Um, adds lots of flavor, lots of depth. And we're going to add that with some chicken stock as well. Put all those flavors together and it'll kind of stew and it'll just be come together really well. If you're not so keen on chicken thighs, you can use breast. You would just cook it a lot um faster. You wouldn't have you put the chicken breast in just at the very last kind of 15 minutes. You would add your um your stock and your herbs and your butter beans first and cook them and then add in your chicken breasts at the end. They dry out a lot quicker so and don't need to cook as long. If, if you weren't so keen on the thigh, but if you haven't tried them, really do give it a go. It's they are you'll be you'll be a fan of them, and pr I promise you. You also can make it vegetarian by obviously leaving out the chicken, adding in more um you got in chickpeas, more veg um would work as well. And obviously, you would use the end vegetable stock instead of chicken stock. I'm going to heat back up again. It's coming together nicely. We will add in a tablespoon of plain flour. This is just to it'll be like a thickening agent for the sauce. If you just put that in, give it a quick stir. And if you um, want this gluten free, you would just use uh, gluten free flour. And then we're just going to add in some of our thyme. I better stir that in as well, get all the vegetables nice and coated. Okay, that's coming up well there. So we will prepare our chicken. I just move, move our potatoes out of the way for now. So with chicken, you need to use a separate board and a separate knife, a bit of um, food hygiene. You, do, you always keep your raw meat and your vegetables separate and with, you keep, I mean, you'd use a different knife and a different um, chopping board. Got my different knife. So we're gonna cut these in half um, because they're quite big and it just gives more portion size. So you just wanna cut just straight down the middle and we're, because there's no bone and no skin, it's very simple. I'm just going to add these as I cut them. Is that chicken thighs, is it? Or can you use chicken breast as well? Yeah, you can use breast. It um it's just it won't take as long to cook. It's not as won't it's not as juicy, it doesn't it's not as flavorsome either, but you can use them. But I would really recommend giving thighs a go if you, you could brine this off. Um if you were doing it in the oven and doing it slower, mm -hmm. I would um brine the meat off before putting it in the oven. But because we're doing it on the hob, it's gonna kind of just brown here before we add the stock. So it's it's fine. And I'm just gonna quickly wash my hands and put this board away. Um, one minute. 
and we'll get rid of this bowl as well. Ricky, we have a wee question there, um, which is, could you use chicken on the bone? Yes, <clears throat> you can. So you get the chicken thighs with the bone in as well. Um, you can also use it with the skin. If you are doing it with the skin, you would you would brown it off first. It's quite important to get that skin. You just do it in the skin side down, five minutes in the oil um, first, and then the bone, the bone in as well. Bone makes the meat keep its flavor as well, and there's, there's flavor that comes from the bone. So um, I just know some people, some people are quite funny with cooking with bones and things. So I just thought this is a an easier way, but definitely, yeah, you can keep the bone in. And again, you can scale this recipe up or down, depending on how many people you need to, you're feeding, or you can freeze it as well. So it's again, it's just, just double your, your ingredients as you need them. But this will freeze really well in a, a tight container, get it into the freezer as quickly as you can as it goes cold and it'll defrost it the night before and reheat the next day. Or it'll keep in the fridge for three days as well. So you can, if you want, you can eat it for three days in a row. As long the flavor will get more intense and better as long as you leave them. Maybe you made this the night before and put it in the fridge and have for dinner the next day. You'll have more of those flavors. The flavors are all settled. The meat will have relaxed and the all the flavors and the sauce will be really nice. But again, it's just as nice straight from the hob as well. It's all coming together quite well. The meat is. Getting good color on it. Just give it a wee minute and then I'm going to add our chicken stock, which is just a chicken stock pot with some boiling water. You just dissolve it. Um, there's loads of different stock pots on the market now. You can get ones with wine in them, different herbs. Um, quite adventurous now with them. You can sip this in your supermarket where your normal stock cubes are kept. I'm just gonna add in our butter beans now, which is a great source of fiber, protein. And they're so easily got in the supermarket. And they have a nice, they give a nice creaminess texture to them. They work really well in casseroles and stews and soups. It's really nice colors as well. You've got our green and our orange and our chicken and it's nice and homely, welcoming, comforting. Okay. I'm going to add in our stock. So it's 700 mils of chicken stock. Add that in. Give everything a nice stir. See if you're using regular stock cubes, would you use two or just one? Or? Um, it, so we're using 700 mils of water. So usually a uh, stock cube is roughly 500 mils mm -hmm. per um, one cube per 500 mils of water. Mm -hmm. If you want a more rich stock, you would add two. Again, that's kind of personal taste. Um, because we have the thyme and the garlic and our carrots and things, I think there's enough flavor there that one stock cube's enough. Mm -hmm. But again, it's just um, personal taste. Mm -hmm. Just always be careful with stock cubes. They can have that wee bit of extra salt in them. So you you kind of, it's always better to be on the more cautious side and it's quite yeah. hard to get salt out of a dish once it's in there. Mm -hmm. we'll just bring this back to the boil and then we'll put our lid on and we'll let it simmer for a wee bit. We're going to add in our bay leaf. The bay leaf um, we'll take out before serving, but that just um just adds depth and flavor to to the sauce. And we'll add our Dijon mustard again, which is um adding great flavor, great way of cheating, of getting loads of flavor into your dish quite easily. Just one tablespoon of that. You could use whole grain mustard or English mustard, it would work fine as well. I'll just give that all a Start around. Um, somebody has asked, uh, Ricky, it would, um, it would be a different texture, but could you try lentils instead of beans? Yeah, 
lentils would be great would be great as well some red lentils or pool lentils would work um you would just add those in at this stage as well um and that would work really well you can buy now kind of uh cooked lentils which are brilliant real cheeked way of putting as an express kind of we just add those in at the very end because they don't need just need to be heated they don't need cooking um that would work too they're in, they come canned, I think, do they? Yeah, you can get them canned or you can get them in like little pouches, you know, like the microwave rice, that type. Oh, okay. They come in cans too. Again, really convenient, really cheap. So our sauce is thickening and it's got a nice colour to it. So we'll just pop on our lid in a wee minute and we'll let that cook down. Add our potatoes first. So we'll just pop these in and they'll cook nicely in the broth. Let's come into a nice simmer now. So we'll just give our particular potatoes in the, our sauce and we'll pop our lid on. We'll simmer this now for kind of 20, 30 minutes. Um, the long, if you have more time, you could do it slower and longer. Again, it would work in your slow cooker. A, uh, that's kind of pot does all the work, which is great. I'll just move these out of my way. So we'll just go through the recipe again. So we see we've used some we used some garlic olive oil, um, some carrots, celery, uh, onion, the garlic, our plain flour to thicken the sauce, our chicken thighs cut in half, the dry thyme, the bay leaf, and our uh, butter beans, and then we had some the Dijon mustard in there as well in the chicken stock. It's quite little ingredients, make quite a good meal. Um, great for feeding the crowd as well. You can just double it up. Um, it's great because we have potatoes and butter beans in there you don't really need a side with it of course you can if you wish have rice or couscous um but i think all oh, this really needs is just some bread that you can soak up the the juices with uh, i think that's more than enough but again if you've got lots of hungry people you might want to add rice to the side yes are there variations that you could do in this, Ricky? Like if you like the spicier stew or something like that? Yeah, you could add in you could add in some spice, you could add in um some chili, you could change the vegetables, you know, again, it could be whatever you have handy. Um you could change the chicken to more veg. Um you can lots of things you can do with it. You could do different stock as well. Um you could use vegetable stock. Um Really good for leftover meat as well, actually. If you've got like a chicken, from, you know, Sunday roast or whatever, you've got leftover um, chicken, that'll go in here great, fine as well. Um, you just doesn't need as long to cook. So you'd cook off the potatoes and then you'd add in your your cooked meat at the very end just to rewarm really it through. But it's a great way for, let, for using up leftovers too. Give everything. Just the one thing sticking to the bottom, so just always keep checking that it's everything's cooking away nicely. This is a real good comfort meal. Um, comfort food, is something I love comfort food. And this is a real good healthy, healthy one. Does anybody have what's people's favorite comfort food? Do they have a go-to when you're feeling a bit blue? It cheers you up. Bolognese. Bolognese, yeah. That's a lot of people's a lot of people find I think in this country. Um mm -hmm. <laughs> can't beat it. Yeah, I, I love or oh, somebody has says chili there. Um yeah. I uh, love my mother's lamb stew. I can't make it like she did, but it was with dumplings and butter yes. beans and uh it's a real old fashioned thing, but I yeah, love it. Anything in kind of warm in a bowl is just it's just yeah, a hug in yeah, a bowl, yeah. isn't it? It's, it's a good of... it's a good job with near lunchtime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll let the lead off a wee bit so we get some of that steam out so the sauce will thicken more for us. Um <laughs> you just want to keep a wee eye on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there is loads. 
my website tantrismandsaucepans.com there's loads of other recipes kind of like this um cooking in a pot and um comfort food winter warmers um it's kind of the way i would cook a lot so it's they're on there if you want to have a wee look and again the, there's the food magazines in the library and cookbooks as well It has a really nice color to it. I don't know if you can see it or not. But the, the mustard in it has given it a real lovely, rich looking color. I'm gonna have some parsley at the end. So I'm just gonna chop that up now. So I do stocks and all, just get everything a good chop. This is curly parsley, but you can use flat flat leaf one as well, whatever game you have, whatever you have at hand. We'll add this in at the end. I'll keep a bit back for on to put on our plate as well. Those aren't the best, I'll be the first to admit. <laughs> um what what services does the library offer then for cooking? Is there is it is just is it the food magazines and cookbooks and things? Yeah, so we have we have obviously the the normal book stock, and we do have a good selection of cookery books. But we also have the e books and magazines which are available on the Libby app, um, uh, and also another app called Borrow Box. So you can get those on a phone or a tablet if you have the Libby app. Um, and so I quite often would do that just if I'm looking for something different. Yeah. Um, and the magazines are particularly good because some mag magazines are cost of fortune. Well, they're they very do. expensive. So you they can are. get the latest, whatever it happens to be, taste magazine or something like that and see what's happening. So, and, yeah, a good lot of stock for yeah. that. The magazines are brilliant for kind of if you want to kind of keep up and be what's on trend. The food magazines are great for that. That's what's you know what's and they're seasonal as well, which is great for um yeah. do you favorite chefs, Ricky chefs that you particularly like or yeah, well I'm a huge big fan of Nadala Lawson. Um, oh, right, okay. Nadala Lawson got me, kind of got me into cooking. Um <laughs> but I was I'm always a huge fan of hers. Her books are always well her books are all falling apart. I need to re get re buy them. They're they're all um they're in terrible state. Um <laughs> but yeah, I really, I really like her for her simplicity of cooking. And again, it's what you can just get, get just get, give it a go. I'm not saying that on purpose, <laughs> but that, um, you know, just trying things to not very strict of what you should have and what you have and, and learning, I think, which is, and I think she's very good at explaining flavors and putting things together that you wouldn't actually think of. Um, but again, like Jimmy Oliver, Gordon Ramsay, you know, all great as well. Um, I really love Gordon Ramsay's recipes. His recipes are brilliant, but I just can't watch them. Um, James Sardi Martin, he's yeah, right. I was gonna say Sardi Kitchen, and yeah, things and he's been doing the different countries, Spain and France, and that. Yeah, I really love the travel ones, yeah, I'd love those, yeah. Maybe Ricky that... won't be long till you're doing that too. Well, right. here's, hoping, here's hoping that'll be the dream. Ricky Robinson does Spain, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what sort of flavor would the parsley add to stew? Sorry. What sort of um flavor would the parsley add to stew? Uh, it's so just that it's just a kind of earthy, herby oh. kind of flavor. Um, it's also I think you visually you you eat everything visually as well, so mm. it's kind of just the color off it too. But it's very fresh, um, mm. and that kind of earthy, herby taste. You could um also actually I don't actually have one, but you could um add in some lemon juice and the lemon zest at the end as well. That really brings something to life and, and makes it real fresh for you. Um. That works too. I kind of know by looking at the chicken if it's cooked, but um, because the picking the pinkness should be gone out of it. But I always like to use a, a food thermometer. Um, I think I was showing this last week as well. They're just really simple. Really, um, get them online or in a food store. Um, the, the chicken should be at seventy five. So I'll check that at the end. But they're a great wee um thing to have in. And I was doing a was in a going to pop up on Saturday, and all the professional chefs there were using them as well. So. It's really um it's real great just to, for peace of mind, you know. Do you just like to try something new all the time or would you stick to kind of your kind of what you normal kind of favorites or would you be quite adventurous with trying new things? Love to try new things, yeah. Yeah. Especially being vegetarian, I'm always trying to. Yeah, I think vegetarian is 
there's a great way of um, cooking and a great way of getting flavors in. Um, I was vegetarian myself for 15 years. So oh, I, yeah. I love cooking for vegetarians and make it, you know, instead of just the lasagna and curry, um, which I used to always get, yeah. Um, yeah. or a roast of everything but the meat. Um, yeah. I love um, cooking for vegetarians. It's really, it's, you can get loads of flavor in there with spices and creams. And uh, that's what you could really make this veggie. Um, again, by using like butternut squash or um, even, you know, parsnips, just any root kind of vegetable, cut it up and put it in. Um, and cook it down same with just with the potatoes it would be it would be lovely and yes use that, and use a vegetable stock obviously yes I was looking at your tomato soup as well and I was very interested you'd put um leek and carrot in it which yeah is something I wouldn't have thought of so I'm gonna have to um my tomato, my, my tomato soup is quite a hit with my family I have about 15 nieces and nephews and we have a Halloween party every year and I make that soup and they all they <laughs> love it it's, yeah, um, it's a great way of getting veg and the children that they don't know they're yeah. having. Again, it's personal preference. If you want the sauce to be quite thick or, or a lot more um, runnier, it depends if you want, you know, it depends on yourself. But I like that we bit more thicker and it's nice for bread to scoop it up. Oh, my glasses are steaming up. <laughs> So we're nearly there with this. Just gonna leave the lid off for the last few minutes so we get it kind of thickens up a bit. And a lot in some of our parsley now. Okay, and give everything a good stir. So the sauce is quite thick now and the, the parsley is just brought to life. It's good if you can see it or not straight down, but that looks really well. I will Check our chicken is cooked. So again, you take it off the heat, uh, the heat source, and just try to give it good. Yeah, we're at we're at eighty nine, so it should be seventy five. So that's cooked. Well, I'll just turn this our heat off. So you could just put your lid back on and forget about it. That'll go completely cold. Pop it in the fridge, and reheat it tonight or tomorrow and uh, we'll stay in there for three days for you um or even just let it go completely cold meat it tonight it, and the flavors will all mature and the juices will come out of the chicken again all back into the sauce it'll make it a lot richer but it's totally fine as well to, to eat right away we yeah so you can see it's got quite a thick sauce that wee bit of flour has really just that one tablespoon has given us a nice thick consistency and we'll just plate up now let's grab my plate Or bowl, should I say? And I'm just going to use a ladle for this. This is pure comfort in a bowl and perfect for that. It's measurable outside. So it's just a wee bit of our parsley, a good bit of narrow ratty. And I think some bread to serve with, and that is, that's us. Mm. So if you can 